Hare Krishna, everyone. Welcome back once again to our ongoing series on the glories of our most beloved Sri Vrindavan Dham. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pashtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharane Nivishesha Shunyavadi Pastrata Deshatarane All glories to Srila Prabhupada. <coughs> so today we're continuing with our mini-series uh, entitled Stimulation for Ecstatic Love, and this will be part 47. In today's lecture, we will discuss the glories of Krishna's conch shell as a stimulus for awakening our love for him. As we've uh, several times mentioned, this uh, mini-series is based on chapter 26 of um, Sridhar Prabhupada's Nectar of Devotion. In the introduction to that chapter, Sridhar Prabhupada specifically mentions Krishna's conch shell. He writes, Some things which give impetus or stimulation to ecstatic love of Krishna are his transcendental qualities, his uncommon activities, his smiling features, his apparel and garlands, his flute, his uh, buffalo horn, his leg bells, his conch shell, his footprints, his places of pastimes such as Vrindavan, and his favorite plant, uh, Tulsi Devi. A couple of pages later, Prabhupada writes, Krishna's conch shell is known as Pancha Janya. This Pancha Janya conch is also mentioned in Bhagavad Gita. Krishna sounded it before the battle of Kutukshetra. It is said that when Lord Krishna blows on his transcendental conch shell, the wives of the demons become subject to miscarriages and the wives of the demigods become blessed with all auspiciousness. In this way, the sound of Krishna's conch shell uh, used to vibrate and circulate all over the world, 5,000 years ago, all over the world. So therein, Sridhar Prabhupada writes that uh, Krishna's conch shell is mentioned in Bhagavad Gita. The exact verse, of course, is known by many devotees. It's uh, chapter 1, verse 15. Lord Krishna blew his conch shell, called Panchajanya. Arjuna blew his, the Deva Datta, and Bhima, the voracious eater and performer of mighty tasks, uh, blew his terrific conch shell, called Pondra. Pondra. Now, it's interesting that our acharyas say that the Panchajanya conch is also a close associate of Krishna's lips, but it does not share the same degree of intimacy the flute enjoys with Krishna's lips. The acharyas say it cannot even be counted in the same category as the flute. The conch uh, enjoys the formal role of declaring Krishna's arrival ooh, or his challenge to uh, an opposing enemy. These are considered transcendentally inferior to the flute's uh, intimate service of conveying messages to the Braja Gopis, uh, especially Srimati Radharani. Nevertheless, this conch is very, very dear to the Lord, as we'll see in this lecture today. And due to its fame, um, sages chant the following mantra uh, for worshiping the sacred conch of Krishna. Uh, this mantra is found in the Agama Shastras, it's found there. And I also found it in Iskand's uh, DT Worship Manual. Om Thvam Pura Sa Goro Utpana uh, Vishnu Navi Durita Kare Devascha Pujita Shavarto Pancha Janya Namostute. It's very nice. I offer my respects to the Pancha Janya Kanch of Krishna, which appeared from the ocean and which is worshipped by all the demigods. Beautiful mantra. And I, probably a lot of Iskand's uh, Pujaris know that mantra because it's meant to be used in Lord Krishna's worship when we're using the, uh, the conch. Now, in Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, Canto 10, Chapter 45, there's a very wonderful uh, pastime wherein it's described 
how Krishna got this conch uh, from the ocean. And the pastime begins when Krishna was studying with his brother Balaram in the Gurukul of Sandipani Muni in Ujjain. And after the completion of his education, Krishna wanted to offer Sandipani Muni some Guru Dakshin. So Sandipani Muni suggested Krishna find his lost son. His son was lost. And after searching for a while, Lord Krishna found out that his teacher's son was actually captured and abducted by a demon named Panchajana. Panchajana. And this particular demon lived in the sea, under the ocean, under the water, uh, inside a conch shell. So Krishna soon entered you know, into a fight with this demon and, and killed him. And thus he rescued the son of uh, Sandipani Muni and he took the conch shell. In the purport to Srimad Bhagavatam 10.45.45, it's actually stated that uh, the conch shell the Lord took from Panchajana, which is called Panchajanya, is the same one he sounded at the beginning of Bhagavad Gita. Uh, another interesting fact is, according to the Acharyas, Panchajana had become a demon in a way similar to that of Jai and Vijay. In other words, though appearing in the form of a demon, he was actually a great devotee of the Lord. It's a long story. We won't long past and we won't tell it now. And in Gopal Champu uh, Song 2, text number 8, Srila Jiva Goswami states that after getting the conch uh, from the ocean, Krishna, accompanied by Lord Balram, actually went to uh, Yamaraja's abode and blew that conch shell very loudly. He writes specifically, Accompanied by his elder brother Balaram, Krishna went to Yamaraja's abode and suddenly sounded the conch shell, which was named Panchajanya. Now, now Jiva Goswami describes that particular act of the Lord going to the hellish worlds uh, where Yamaraj rules as an act of extreme mercy, and he explains why. Uh, it's text 17. It's really amazing. I'd never read it before. <laughs> Shiva Goswami describes, By the sound of the conch, the most sinful people in hell gave up their fear and became happy. The fires of hell became peaceful on seeing Krishna. All the swords <laughs> became blunt, having his darshan, and all the torture machines fell apart upon seeing Krishna. O Vyasa, the blades in Ashipatra hell broke, the Rorava lost its cruelty. The hell called Bhairava lost its fearful nature. And Kumbhipaka hell stopped cooking anyone. When Krishna arrived, the hell in which sinners are thrown from a mountain gave up its terrible nature. The iron needles used in torture lost their power of stitching. The Vaitarani River, the Vaitarani River, hard to cross, became easy to cross. When the Lord of the universe arrived, everyone became liberated because their sins had been destroyed. Seeing Krishna, they attained the indestructible abode. Going on millions of airplanes, they looked at the lotus-eyed Lord and became freed of all sinful reactions. O sage, when everyone saw the, the Lord of lords, the form of the universe, Hell became empty. <laughs> wow. I was thinking next time I hear the sound of the conch, I'm going to remember how purifying it actually is. That's the purpose of these lectures, actually, to appreciate brudge and everything connected to it. So after this, Srila Jiva Goswami concludes. He says, when Lord Krishna returned their son, the guru and his wife became filled with happiness. Of course, Lord Krishna's conch is an eternal, eternal part of his paraphernalia. And thus, uh, by his mystic powers, we also hear of it earlier 
in Krishna's Vindavan pastimes, like when he was a young boy, because rescuing the conch, well, getting the conch shell from the ocean happened actually after Krishna had left Vrindavan. He was studying with Sandipani Muni and, and Ujjain. But um, by his mystic powers, because it's an eternal part of his paraphernalia, um, we also hear of it in uh, his earlier pastimes in Vrindavan. For example, I was reading uh, in Ananda Vrindavan Champu, chapter 15, by Kavi Karnapura. He describes how Krishna was worshipped uh, by Panchajanya, the conch shell, during Govardhan Leela. He writes, Govardhan, with the limbs of his own body, provided an elegant throne made of smooth stones and pearls for Krishna. The demigod Varuna personally held a fine uh, white umbrella over Krishna's head, which had a fringe of hanging pearls that appeared like uh, falling raindrops. Bayu, his arm uh, trembling in ecstatic devotion, stood beside the Lord fanning him with a chamara whisk. The full moon assumed the form of a mirror made of jewels. Panchajanya, the Lord's conch shell, sanctified the atmosphere with loud sounds. This is all happening at Govardhan Hill. The effulgent Sudarsan Chakra expanded as many lamps to illuminate all directions. Krishna's white lotus flower expanded into many white umbrellas to shield the Lord. And Komodaki, the Lord's club, who is honored by his strength, stood like a jeweled pillar for the bathing ceremony. Wow. Now, there are other instances in Vrindavan as well where the conch shell appeared in uh, Krishna's leelas. For example, the following statement is found in the Bhakti Ratnakara, written by Sri Narhari Chakravarti. O Srinivas, here Krishna performed wonderful pastimes. The cowherd Sridham uh, played Guruda, and Lord Govinda Krishna mounted his shoulders with a four-armed form. Garuda and Govinda looked very beautiful. Therefore, this place is named Garuda Govinda. Now, if we analyze that verse, we can understand that the four-armed form mentioned there is uh, Krishna's expansion, Lord Narayan. Lord Narayan holds uh, four instruments or items in his hands. A lotus, a conch, a disc, and a club. And all these uh, four items are actually for the pleasure of, of his devotees. So in that pastime, Krishna manifested the items of Narayan, including the conch. And as such, that conch is part of a playful pastime of Krishna's Vrindavan Leela, and as such, a stimulus for ecstatic love. Now, I was thinking that one might be surprised to, to hear that Narayan, the lord of Vaikuntha, the official kingdom of God, Aishwarya Bhava, appears in uh, Braj Leela. But according to our Acharyas, actually he is very much part of the Brajabasi's lives. Uh, for as uh, part of social custom, he's the Ishtadev of the Brajavasis, the Lord of Lords. Of course, Krishna is God, we all know that, and he's the origin of Narayan. But, as we've explained many times when it's so nectarian, Yoga Maya calls the Brajavasis to forget uh, that Krishna is God so that they can love Krishna <laughs> in an intimate way as no one's ever been loved before. As a friend, as a child, or a lover, that's the special nature of Vrindavan. So as, I was trying to think of the phrase, God-fearing people, they follow social customs, the Brajavasis, they worship Lord Narayan in their homes. I was reading just this morning that uh, on the suggestion of Gargamuni, uh, when Krishna was born or when Krishna appeared, Nanda Maharaj installed a deity of Lord Nishringadev 
for the protection of Krishna and Balaram and his subjects. And actually that deity is still worshipped to this very day. And Nanda Maharaj also worshipped a deity of Lord Varaha, whom he placed in the same temple uh, as Lord Nishingadev, and another uh, small deity of Lord Narayan, which is actually no longer worshipped, uh, having been disfigured. But next time you go to Vrindavan, you go out to Nanda Ground, Nanda Gaon, uh, and you go into the palace, you can see these deities, and Lord Narayan is there because he was the family deity of Nanda and Yasoda, as per social custom. And there's even a sweet pastime where Krishna himself mentions Lord Narayan as the Brajavasi's worshipable deity. And that pastime is as follows. Once, while herding cows, the cowherd boys rested in a large circle with Krishna in the middle in the shade of a big banyan tree. And their cows were also resting uh, peacefully, as described after a long journey from Vrindavan village. Now the boys had been snacking, eating little bits along the way, and they were worried that what whatever was left of their lunch packs would not be enough to satisfy their appetites later on, or the main meal, their lunch. One boy is quoted as saying, my tiffin is as empty as my stomach. Another boy added, I have barely enough to whet my appetite. Why bother eating at all? So in this way, the boys were kind of complaining to one another. And then, they complained to Krishna, <laughs> their only shelter and refuge. And Krishna said with a smile, it's very instructive, friends do not lament. We should always accept whatever we receive as Lord Narayan's mercy. If we do, we will never be disappointed. By his grace, uh, a morsel may satisfy any appetite. And without it, even a feast will not be enough. By his, Narayan's grace, a morsel may satisfy any appetite, but without his grace, even a feast will not be enough. So, pleased by Krishna's words of wisdom, the cowherd boys sat to eat the remnants of their packed lunches with, it's described, renewed vigor, only to find that as much as they ate, their tiffins were never emptied. Krishna is the master of all mystics. Again and again it's described that the boys scooped food into their mouths only to see it reappear in their tiffins or lunch bags. And when they finished, uh, they still had as much in their tiffins as when they had started. So the boys were accustomed to Krishna's miracles. <laughs> happened every day when they're out with Krishna. So once again, they praised him profusely. But Krishna simply put his palms together and turning his uh, lotus eyes to the sky, he said, it's all the mercy of Lord Narayan. So there you go. Lord Narayan's very prominent in a particular way, a special way <laughs> in, in Braj. Hmm? All glories to Vrindavan. Now, there's another very famous pastime of the Lord's conch shell acting as the stimulus of ecstatic love in relationship to the ultimate rasa dance. Many of you know this pastime, but repetition is necessary. So in this pastime, uh, Lord Narayan appears again with forearms, holding his uh, famous club, conch, disc, and lotus. And during this particular rasa dance, because rasa dances happen actually all over Vrindavan at different times of the year. During this particular rasa dance, <clears throat> while Krishna and the gopis were relishing each other's company, uh, Purnamasi arranged, it's all Leela, that Krishna detected some rivalry amongst the gopis, resulting uh, in the neglect of Sri Radha. Even though this whole pastime of Rasa Leela, according to the Rajabhasis, is really for her pleasure. 
So um, Krishna felt compelled to correct uh, the gopis' quote-unquote false pride, and mainly to show Radharani's special position amongst all the gopis, which will they, they will not disagree with, you'll see. So at one point, Krishna left the rasa dance, and as expected, um, all the gopis were, were grief-stricken. In fact, Vrindavan Ishwari, Srimati Radharani, Queen of Vrindavan, was so overcome by emotion that she actually fainted. And thus it was clear to all the other gopis that her state, her fainting, was as a result of her superior love for Krishna. So try as they might, those gopis, they couldn't revive Shirada. So one of the girls suggested that they go and find Krishna and bring him back there because they felt his appearance would uh, surely revive her. So meanwhile, Krishna was hiding within a grove uh, on the bank of a nearby lake. Actually, that lake was soon to be known as Narayan Sarovara. It's just near Govardhan Hill. We're going there this year, in a few weeks actually, um, in our Kartik Parikama. So he's hiding there. So before long, the uh, gopis arrived some, somewhat nearby, and it appeared they appeared to see Krishna. It's beautifully described, silhouetted by moonlight, silhouetted by moonlight. Oh, for that vision! <laughs> And they all cried out in unison, Look, there's Krishna, the son of Nanda Maharaj. But as soon as the gopis started running towards him, uh, Krishna, ro uh, Krishna froze. He froze in fear. Because, why? He had wanted Radharani to come alone in searching for him. Not in this instance, all the others. So, as to to conceal himself from all these gopis, Krishna instantly assumed a four-armed uh, form of Narayan. Thus, when the cowherd girls came into the meadow where he was hiding, they were astonished by what they saw. Seated before them in that uh, forest clearing was Lord Narayan in all his, uh, it's described, Vaikuntha glory. Ashvaryabha, awe and reverence. And in his hands were the famous club, conch, disc, and lotus. And also around his neck was a Vajjayanti garland. Vajjayanti means five different types of flowers, all very aromatic, uh, the garlands reaching down to his feet. Now, the gopis, they whispered politely to one another, he's not Krishna. He's the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Narayan. So as customary, <laughs> they all bowed down to the Lord and addressed him as follows. O oh Lord Narayan, the gopis prayed, we offer our respectful obeisances unto you. Kindly be merciful to us. Give us the company of the son of Maharaj Nanda and thus vanquish our lamentation. <laughs> Actually, the glory of the gopis' love for Krishna was that even with the vision of a four-armed Narayan, they couldn't be satisfied. Instead, they begged the Lord the boon of achieving Krishna's company. So after submitting their prayer, and again and again and again, offering obeisances, the gopis departed with the hope that their search for Krishna would bear fruit now that they had received the blessing of the Supreme Lord. Sri Vrindavan Dham, so amazing. So meanwhile, um, Shimachi Radharani's uh, personal maidservants who stayed behind had managed to revive her and, um, how is it described, raise her spirits. So they encouraged her to, to uh, follow the example of the other gopis and, and find Krishna. And so it was that uh, just after the first group of gopis had left Lord Narayan, Radha, 
Sri Radha and her maidservants appeared in that same grove. And so as to joke or you could say humor Sri Radha, Krishna kept his forearm form along with his club, conch, disc and lotus. So when Srimati Radharani happened to come upon, it's described, he whom, he whom she thought to be her beloved, she was saddened, instead to find Lord Narayan. And at that time, uh, all, all she could barely manage to mutter was, Om Namo Narayanaya Namaha, through her tears. I offer my respectful obeisances to Lord Narayan. However, seeing Lord Narayan, with his club, conch, disc, and lotus, increased her feeling to see Krishna even more. Thus the conch, as well as Narayan's other regla, acted as a stimulus for her ecstatic love of Krishna. You see how important the conch is in Brajalila. Now, while this was all going on, Krishna tried his best to maintain his four-armed form. But Srimati Radharani's desire to see her beloved, him, was so strong that he was forced by her bhakti, her love, to revert to his original two-armed form. The Acharyas say that, like the other gopis, uh, seeing Lord Narayan did not relieve Radha's distress. But unlike the other gopis, Radha's love forced Krishna to reveal himself. They say that this is the unmatched glory of Radharani's love for Krishna, and we worship that love. Now Rupa Goswami, Srila Rupa Goswami, describes this very beautifully in his um, Ujvala Nilamani Nayika Bheda, uh, verse number seven. Um, this verse is also found in Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Lila, chapter 17. Sri Rupa writes, Prior to the Rasa dance, Lord Krishna uh, hid himself in a grove just to have fun. When the gopis came, their eyes resembling those of deer, by his sharp intelligence he exhibited his beautiful forearm form to hide himself. But when Srimati Radharani came there, Krishna could not maintain his four arms in her presence. This is the wonderful glory of her love. Thank you, Sri Rupa Goswami. So when the other gopis returned to find that Sri Radha had forced Lord Narayan, <laughs> Krishna, to reveal his true identity, which they could not do, they again enthusiastically praised Sri Radha's superior love for Krishna. Aradhana, she who uh, gives the most pleasure to Krishna. Now, interestingly enough, there's uh, a somewhat similar pastime that the Brajabhasis like to take in, in Vrindavan, I've heard it several times, of the conch facilitating ecstatic love in the pastime of Krishna and his cowherd friends, his cowherd boyfriends. Uh, there's a, play, a pastime place in Vrindavan called Dhana uh, by the locals. And once while uh, playing with his friends there, Krishna hid from them during their play, kind of like hide and seek, I guess you could say. And several different groups of boys were looking everywhere for him. Finally, uh, one group found a peacock feather on the ground. And one boy held up the feather and said, Krishna must have danced here with the peacocks. In his exuberance, his own feather must have fallen from his turban. Boys, were on the right track. And actually, they were on the right track. Because as the boys hurried around, they, they, they closed in on Krishna, who, having nowhere to hide, actually, in, in an open meadow, resorted to a bit of transcendental camouflage, we could say. I think that's the best way to describe it. A new phrase, transcendental camouflage. For beneath um, a small banyan tree, Krishna manifested his form as four-armed Lord Narayan. Again, with his divine symbols in his hands, the club conch, disc, and lotus. Plus, it's described a kastuba gem around his 
chest and a crown. So when the boy spotted Krishna's bluish black effulgence from a distance, they all raced to be the first to touch him. But when they arrived at the banyan tree, the banyan tree, they stopped short uh, because what did they see before them when they came closer? It's described the master of all creation. And they were simply struck with wonder to see this towering form of forearm Lord Narayan, who was leaning casually upon his club while holding his conch to his lotus mouth while smiling at them uh, fondly like a um, uh, benevolent father. So the boys spontaneously, as they'd learned from their parents, they bowed down to Lord Narayan, and then still kneeling, full of wonder, and palms joined in respect, the cowboy boys just huddled together, not knowing what they're supposed to do next. When they're with Krishna, they know what to do, but here they're with Lord Narayan, and they just learned a few simple things from their parents, how to respect Lord Narayan. So they're kind of sitting there dumbstruck, dumbfounded. So, touched by his love for his bewildered friends, Krishna couldn't restrain himself any longer. Here we go again. So he quickly resumed his original form as a coward boy, jumped up and said, surprise! And then he ran towards the grazing cows. So brought to life again by Krishna's clever trick, the boys jumped to their feet and ran excitedly behind him, calling, calling out, I knew it was Gopal, one boy said. Another boy said, no, no, I knew it was Gopal. Other boys like that. Everyone started saying, I will be the first one to catch him. <laughs> they all wanted to be the first one to catch him. So there again, uh, Narayan appeared to the, to, the, to the cowherd boys. So once again, we see how the conch played a role in stimulating ecstatic love for Brajabhasis, for Krishna. And by hearing this, these pastimes, hopefully it will stimulate a little bit our love for Krishna as well. That's the purpose of these lectures, after all. So one final pastime, revealing how the conch is a stimulation for ecstatic love. Give me a second here. I'm in Durban, South Africa, and it's very hot out. <laughs> um, one more pastime of stimulation for ecstatic love. Um, Bhakti Rasan Mita Sindhu by Rupa Goswami. Uh, it describes a situation uh, involving the Pandavas when they were living in exile in, in Vrindavan for a short period. During that time, um, we've described some years ago, Duryodhan sent Durvasamuni to test them. And at that time, the Pandavas were very anxious, thinking that, you know, Durvasamuni, he can easily bless, he can easily curse. So it's described the Pandavas were a little anxious that maybe they would get cursed. So Bhakti, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu describes, suddenly they heard a loud noise reverberating in the sky. So Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, or let us say Rupa Goswami, he says, um, just see, on hearing the reverberating sound of Krishna's conch shell, that was the sound, Krishna's conch shell, named Panchajanya, the five Pandavas became like the five-faced one Shiva. Hearing this conch, the five Pandavas be became like the five-faced one, Shiva. So I read that, I said, how's that? But read on. Rupa Goswami clarifies. He says, in other words, they became whitish in complexion like Shiva. Then he, he goes very deep. He says, this indicates the sattvika bhava, the ecstatic bodily transformation named vaivarnya, vaivarnya. It, it, I looked it up, it means paleness of skin. He concludes, they became so ecstatic on hearing Krishna's conch shell that the color of their skin faded, and then they knew nobody could harm them. All glories to Sri Rupa Goswami Prabhupada. So that's an example of Krishna's conch acting a, again as a stimulus for ecstatic love for the Pandavas. So in closing, I never like to close, but we all have our services. 
In closing, I've heard it said, and I probably some of you have also heard it said, those of you who've visited Vrindavan, that in Brajlila, in Brajlila, the inhabitants of Vrindavan disdain the conch shell because when blown, it reminds them of Akuras blowing the conch upon leaving Vrindavan with Krishna and Balaram. You know, he came to Vrindavan to get Krishna and Balaram, take them back to Mathura to fight with the wrestlers under Kamsa's order. So as he's leaving Vrindavan, oh, he blows the conch. So that's a terrible moment in the, in the lives of the Brajabhasis. So it, I've heard it said that the Brajabhasis, they don't like the sound of the conch because oh, Krishna's leaving. That's, that's um, it's said. <laughs> it's local talk. But in my research, I found a, a different and certainly more authoritative perspective, authoritative perspective, given by Srila Jiva Goswami in Gopal Champu, 2, 3, 30. It's so beautiful. It concerns, you know, when we find these things, it's like finding a diamond or a ruby or an emerald, <laughs> something. Um, this verse describes, it, it concerns a letter that Nanda Maharaj received from Krishna, who was living in Dwarka, in, in this particular uh, verse. Uh, Krishna's living uh, in Dwarka for some time. So we know that he would, he sent letters with, um, with uh, Uddhava to Vrindavan to console the Brajabhasis, not just one time, but several times actually. So this concerns a letter Nanda Maharaj received from Krishna who was living in Dwarka. And this letter was being read by a priest, Sri Jiva says, to Nanda Maharaj, with many Brajbasis gathered around together. Listen to this letter. Krishna is writing to his father. O father, I do not live in Indraprastha or Dwarka, but rather in this letter. As I live in this letter, keep it in your pocket in place of my direct association like Vani instructions. So Sri Jiva writes, just when the letter was being read, the sound of the Panchajanya Kanch arose in the southern direction towards the road to Mathura. When that sweet sound arose, the Brajbasis all desired to know about it and began shouting, victory, victory, in astonishment. Then in great bliss, they began running towards the sound with a joyful gait. The women, children, and elders all ran with them, guessing that Krishna was coming back from Dwarka, not aware of themselves or who was in front or who was behind. Krishna's coming, the conscious sounding his arrival. <laughs> so hearing the sound of the conch spreading everywhere, along with it's described the rattling of the chariot and sounds of victory, victory, coming from the devatas and Swarga Loka, they started to become stunned, all these devotees running in that direction. As they ran forward, Jiva says, they saw Garuda on Krishna's chariot and could no longer move their feet. They could no longer move their feet. Suddenly they stopped and remained standing, stunned like trees, stunned like trees. When they saw the chariot, they came completely immobile and then started an uproar because of Krishna's coming back to Braj. It ends like that. All oh, glories to the Kants, heralding Krishna's return to Vrindavan. <laughs> Hare Krishna. <laughs> Prabhu, thank you so much. It was such nectar researching this topic. Just one lecture uh, on the Kants. And next Friday, uh, we'll lecture on Sudarsan Chakra. Sudarsan Chakra in in, um, in Vrindavan. So please excuse me, I'm going on a Food for Life program in uh, a settlement, a, a township, uh, a poor area here uh, outside of Durban where the African people live. It's one of my favorite places on earth. What? A poor township's one of your favorite places on earth? Yes, because we know how much Prabhupada wanted Prashadam to be distributed 
to everyone, the rich and the poor, the unfortunate, the fortunate, because it begins them on their spiritual journey. It's especially nice to go to these townships where people are so downtrodden and to see their faces light up when we come with, we call it biryani here in South Africa. It's like rice and vegetables, etc. That They love it with the spices and they especially love to chant and dance with us. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. I was thinking this morning, two places are dear to my heart, Vrindavan and an African township. This is all the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Sri Rupalapai. So thanks for listening today and see you next Friday. Shri Shri Gauranitai ki, Shri Shri Krishna Balaram ki, Shri Shri Radhashama Sundar ki, Vrindavan Eshwari, Shri Mati Radharani ki, Krishna's conch shell ki. Maya Purdam ki, Shri Shri Gaur Nitai ki, Shri Krishna Shankirtan Yanya ki, Nitai Gaur Vimanandi, Jay Jay Sisi Radhe Sharm, all the glory of Shri.